it hurts. It's unbearable sometimes. There have been many, many times I've thought, I'm just quitting. There have been so many occasions when I've walked onto the ward and it has been unsafe because of the levels of staffing. You feel devalued, you feel a little bit worthless, you feel like you're not appreciated for what you do. Adele is a junior doctor in the UK's National Health Service who walked out of her hospital in a four-day strike in April, which led to more than 195,000 missed appointments. In the first half of 2023, the number of cancelled appointments amounted to almost half a million as the medical sector took part in the UK's union actions. Over the past year, the UK has recorded the largest number of strikes since the 1980s, with sectors from healthcare to postal service workers and teachers all taking industrial action. It is not a coincidence that they come at a time when the cost of living crisis is cutting into the pockets of the nation, with the cost of basic necessities rocketing to new levels. Last week's strike by junior doctors caused the cancellation of almost 200,000 operations and appointments. The only thing we can really do is strike, and the only cause we can really legitimately strike about is our pay, but it's sort of an indicator for loads of other stuff. Junior doctors are asking for a 35% pay increase. This round of pay negotiations reflects both the acute squeeze created by high inflation now and more than a decade of pay restraint that has seen public sector workers fall way behind their private sector counterparts. So junior doctors, their pay has increased by about 16% in cash terms since 2008, but in that same period, inflation and other factors mean that they're actually 25% worse off. And they're just saying enough is enough. I've been a junior doctor for four years now. I'm doing a 10 month long contract in plastic surgery just to get the experience I need in order to try and make a successful application for my actual training post. My current job has a higher base salary, um, so it's about £40,000, but I never do night shifts. The extra hours, the, the night shifts, they really do make up the bulk of our salaries. So when you factor all that together, I've actually taken a pretty decent pay cut. I will usually be scheduled to work with one of the consultants in the operating theatres. Within plastic surgery, there's loads of different things you could be doing. There's um, hand surgeries. You can do breast surgery, so it's a lot of cancer surgery. Plastic surgery includes burns, so you might be doing skin grafting. Plastic surgeons can do um, cleft lip and palate surgery. They can do head and neck surgery, which is largely taking um, tumours. At the moment, I'm on call. I started my on-call shifts on Saturday, and I will go straight through until this Friday. And during those shifts, we then have to do trauma clinics. So the, there's an awful lot of strain within the NHS. And the more people are struggling, the more people are, are burning out. Since I've started work, it's not been uncommon to hear someone say that one of their colleagues has committed suicide. According to the British Medical Association, around seven in 10 junior doctors surveyed say they always or frequently work in understaffed rotas, which may be placing patient and staff safety at risk. Around half of junior doctors described their desire to work in the NHS in the next year as low or very low. When you first move into a new house, all sorts of things spring up that you weren't expecting to pay for. When I started my new job, there was a mistake made with my pay and it's taken five months to get that resolved. I've been consistently worrying about money, consistently in my overdraft. If any unexpected thing happens, you always feel just a, a heartbeat away from absolute disaster, to be honest. So when it comes to pay in the NHS, the government says that it's set by these independent pay review bodies, which they say they can't really interfere with. These pay review bodies, they will gather evidence over the course of a year, they give their recommendation for maybe a two, three, five percent pay rise. And although, you know, these strikes are kind of directed at the government, the government is trying to, you know, take their hands out of it and say it's not really our, our deal. At the same time, um, we're getting in a bit of an impasse right now. Junior doctors are asking for what's called full pay restoration which would be a 35% pay rise right now. The government is saying that it's completely unaffordable and unacceptable and they have to lower that. You know, there are some things that you see at work or that you do at work that if you were to say them to a person who doesn't work in healthcare, they just wouldn't understand why you're upset. Okay, 
Oh, did you wear it last night as yeah. well? Yeah. So this is night three or four for me. So I'm <laughs> slightly delirious, but it's okay. <laughs> we're we're going to get through it. So I think pay is a, a, a difficult issue. On bank holidays, the person in the hospital paid the least is the, the F1, so the junior doctor who's been a doctor for a year. So you get paid more in the hospital to clean toilets on a bank holiday. It hasn't been safe for, for many years and I, I don't think that will come as a shock to, to anyone. There is nowhere else that a junior doctor can work. We can't even work in private hospitals because the reason people go private is to ensure that they get seen by a consultant. So really, our only options are ditch the NHS entirely. A lot of people have moved to, to places like Australia and New Zealand where you're valued more highly. Now, two out of five doctors said in a recent poll that they are looking to leave the NHS or would accept another job if that was proposed. And 80% are actually saying that they're constantly thinking about ways out as well. The ability to continue striking is what's proving difficult because, you know, we're striking because we are not being paid enough. And we therefore don't, don't really have the ability to take that much unpaid leave from our work. So I think the longer the strikes go on, the more difficult it's going to be. But I think the majority of people have reached the point where they are going to do anything they have to in order to be able to continue striking and making that point. The fact that people are still willing to fight tells me that people have hope that things will get better.